Okay, we have Melissa De La Cruz back. We've come off of one red holiday. We had, oh yeah, red, 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 red. Mm -hmm. How many people were sick of red by the end of December? Now we're back on that train. Yeah. Or maybe something a little different. What do you, you could add pink now. Do some soft colors, right, for Valentine's oh, Day. Thank you, change it yes. up a little. Something else for the love season. Anyway, <laughs> Melissa's gonna do four, four different looks for yes. us? Yes, four. Awesome, and it's gonna be a mix of acrylic and gel? Acrylic, gel, dimension, and on top. So just a variety. Love yeah. it. So let's get started. Hi, today I'm gonna to show you some Valentine inspired nails. I'll do some dimensional, some on top. So let's get started. Okay, so for my first nail I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it in gel. So I'm going to encapsulate everything in it. I'm gonna do like a soft um, opalescent iridescent um, encapsulation. So I'll start with, let's use Shakira Storm. I'm gonna use Crushed Pearl, Star Sand, and Rockstar as my custom mix. And then I'm going to use my In Love little heart-shaped confettis and throw in some little moody in there. Okay, I'm gonna form one at a time because sometimes the forms don't stay on my training hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and form one at a time. If it was my client, I would form one whole hand for sure. Go in with my protein bond. I might as well protein bond them all. Go through all five, one coat. Once you do all 10, you'll go back in with your second coat. Just a little added insurance. The first thing I'm gonna start with is my Clear Sculptor. Clear Sculptor, I'm gonna build my extension out. I think I'll do coffin shape for this one. So, come in here. I like to start in the middle, put my product in front of my brush and walk it all the way up to my sidewall. We repeat the process on the other side and then bring it all down, really soft touch. I like to, let me show you real quick, I like to wipe my brush like this. The reason being is it makes it really thin and I could wipe each side to make sure it's straight and wipe the other side to bring it in. Scar it off a little. There's my extension. I will cure this for 30 seconds. If I was going to extend the whole hand, I would obviously do this on all five before I flash cure it for 30 seconds. You could actually get away with doing all five because it doesn't self-level on the free edge. So next I'm gonna go into my base from cuticle to free edge. It's gonna hook onto my free edge to hold on to it. And I'm going to put it on my natural nail so it'll anchor, everything will anchor to my base. So I'm gonna cure this for 30 seconds. So once I bring it out, I'm going to pinch underneath it. You could also grab it underneath and pinch. If it's still not disconnecting, you could take your magic wand. You could go ahead and use a little side and kind of loosen it. Don't ever try to take it off like an acrylic extension because it will come off with it. Come up underneath and there's your extension. Okay, so from here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna custom mix my glitters. I'm going to just custom mix them in my cap like I usually do. If it's a color I think is gonna be popular, I'll mix a lot more, which actually this color probably will be because it matches a lot of clothing and doesn't really clash with outfits. Iridescence and colors, neutral colors like this, I tend a lot of my clients go to a lot. I'm gonna use my Shakira Storm. It's a soft, pretty pink. I'm gonna go to my Rockstar. Just a dash of this, my crushed pearls, a little bit more of that, and some star sand. Not a whole lot, but just a little of that. So what I did is I went from, if you look really closely, to a very fine, to bigger, to bigger than that size, all the way to the biggest. So when you custom mix like a color you want to look dimensional, if you start really fine and then go bigger, you're always gonna get that dimension look. Let me mix this up. 
So I'm going to take my base and I'm kind of putting some pressure because I really don't want to put it on really thick. I'm just kind of, kind of wanting to wet it so my glitter will stick to it, okay? So what I'm gonna do from here is, you can put another one under here if you want. So I'm gonna sprinkle this in the entire nail. So it's a little pale pink. You could see it kind of absorb and hold on. I do take my orange wood stick and clean around my cuticle area. So then that way, tap it off a little. That way it keeps my cuticle area very clean. Okay, so I will cure this for 30 seconds real quick. Okay, so from here what I'll do is I'll dust it off and you could see everything stuck onto the nail. So this is my background I created, okay? So now I'm saving this little bit. I made a lot more than I needed because it's probably gonna be a popular color. Um, I usually probably would make a little bit less if I was doing say maybe four dimensions, but it's cool to have a color mixed once you have it on your page and your clients pick it, you could just get it off your shelf and you could go really fast with it. So I'm gonna put this to the side and I'm gonna take my base out again and I'm gonna take out some Moody's. I use these a lot. I love the reflection. I love the dimension it creates. Um, it looks different on every color. It's gonna look really iridescent in this color because these are very iridescent colors. I'm gonna use some In Love because it's Valentine's Day, so might as well put hearts in there. I may cut one of the hearts to create a dimension. Maybe I'm gonna break a heart this Valentine's Day. <laughs> Actually, let's see, this cut on the side. Then that way it kind of is like a little teardrop. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take my base and put it from cuticle all the way to free edge. And I'm putting just enough for it to self-level and stick on. Okay, I'll get my orange wood stick, touch my orange wood stick, come in and put like a heart here, and put a piece of a heart here. Let's have this one kind of coming off the free edge. I'm just using my imagination at this point. Let's use some moodies. Put one right here. Now these are just gonna look like little floating discs in here. I am not really going to do it for any rhyme or reason. I just kind of reflect and see what I like. Sometimes I like to overlap my moody onto my heart because I feel like it looks really cool. See, I kind of overlapped that one. Okay, so this just looks really iridescent and simple. Do I add more? I love it. That's perfect. So 30 seconds under the light. So now I'm gonna go into my Build Pink to encapsulate. Remember, you could use Build, you could use Build Pink, whatever one you prefer. This is gonna make the pinker colors come out of it and make everything pop. You know me already, I love Build Pink. So I'm gonna come in here and encapsulate and build all my structure in her nail. Now you don't have to do it all in one. This is a really long nail. I would just want you pretty much to try to cover the whole perimeter of the nail because you could always add in thickness. Bring it down the middle, then fill in your sides. See how it kind of magnifies everything? It looks like there's blue in there, pink, green, purple, every color you could think of. So now I'm going to have her go under. If I needed to encapsulate more than one on this hand, say I was doing two on one hand and maybe two on the other, I would do, I would encapsulate one, have her go under, and then work on the other hand and encapsulate that one. So that way your gel stays exactly where you put it. You could sometimes get away with two if it's pretty cold inside the room, like cooler and it is a little more now because your gel is gonna be a little more stiff. I find in warmer weather that it tends to flow more, okay? Once I've encapsulated all my dimensions, I'm gonna look at it sideways, okay? When you look at it sideways, you could see I have enough here, I have enough here. Here I need a little bit more. That's totally normal. I think it's easier personally for myself to encapsulate and cover the whole entire nail than in this point, come and look at them from the side and I could actually add on two of them if I need to. I don't have to do one at a time at this point. So I'm gonna start in the middle, 
really light touch. As you could see, if you look really close, you could see me just taking a ride on top of my gel. I'm just making contact with it and dragging it down. I'm not inside my gel, so it's just really light touch. All right, so now I'll flash set this 30 seconds. Let's say I was done filling all her nails and with her dimensions, I would fully cure this for one minute, okay? But being that I'm gonna go on to more work, I'm just gonna flash it so it doesn't move for me when I'm done with my last nail. Even though it's had a minute cure, if your last nail has not, you could fully cure them all one minute again. It's not gonna over cure your other nails. Okay, for my next nail, what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use some Mission Control, some Mylar, and some Confetti. So I'm gonna use In Love again, because it is Valentine inspired. I'm going to use Silver Polka Dots. I'm gonna use Blueberry Minty, no, Blueberry Ice. And I'm gonna use Orbit and Sonic and Mission Control. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this form on. A tip I could tell you with working on our training hand, if you filed on her and you have any dust on your sides, your form is not going to stay on. So always make sure that you don't have any glitter from your last nail or any dust if you filed, so it'll stick to the plastic better. I'm gonna go into my clear sculptor. I'm gonna build my extension. Start right at the free edge. As you can see, I have kind of a lot of product, but I'm doing a longer nail, so I'll end up bringing it all, all the way to the bottom. So I like to put it in front of my brush, bring it over to one side, come over here and bring it over to the other, and then lightly feather it all the way down. I think I'll do the same shape. You'll find sometimes when you do gel, you'll make your extension pretty tight, like as tight as you're wanting to file them. Gel will self-level, so it'll make it look a little wider like this one. That's fine, you still have your guide. Okay, just bring it out to the same point. Wipe off your brush. Come in here and make sure your sides are clean. Okay, 30 seconds. Help your training hand go into the light because sometimes the form might hit. It's a great tip. So I kind of hold it for her. That's just for the training hand. A good thing we don't have to help our clients in, right? <laughs> I mean, if I had to, I would, but it's kind of nice to know tips for the training hand because sometimes you'll come out and the form will be crooked or up or not where you put it. So it just helps. So it's been in there long enough. I can let it go from here and finish the, the 30 seconds. Starts to harden about 15 seconds into it. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my base from cuticle to free edge. Come through here. Put pressure on your brush to make sure you're weaving it into the natural nail. Then let's look at it sideways. Looks like it's all straight. Uh, you could use a little bit right here. I'm just being picky. I normally would probably leave it, but if it's a big dip, I like to show you how to melt into it when you just add it really quick. Um, make sure it's clean again on the sides. Okay, now this will cure 30 seconds as well. Remember, it's a little more challenging on Sally because you, I call her Sally, remember our trainer hand? I should rename her this year. I'll think of a new name, but <laughs> the training hand, I always have to help her in. Just a reminder, so when you're practicing, you don't get frustrated. Okay, so I like to bring out my little ears right here so I know about where it stops. Push in. If it's not, let's say it's not pushing in very well. Sometimes it's a little stubborn. Just get your orange wood stick and push just below where the gel is, okay? Push just below where the gel is here on this side. Pinch it and come straight down. Now, I like to sometimes if I see my gel comes over a little further because when you encapsulate, your gel will kind of go where there's something stickier to the side. I like to keep my sides really clean. So I might just nip a little. That side's pretty clean. This side was hanging a little more. Let me turn it so you could see a little more. It was hanging kind of like to here. You could see a little bit left. No big deal. I don't make it perfect. I just get it in the area because I'm gonna file it to perfection at the end. I actually could have used this. I didn't see this here. This would have been way better. It's a straight edge. So it would have been, see how clean and nice that is. This is actually my favorite. It's just a little toenail clipper with a straight edge. The best. 
And it actually works better than your nipper because sometimes when you use your nipper, it might crack if you don't hold it right. So that's your best bet is the straight edge toenail clipper. Let's use a little bit of the color we mixed earlier, the same mixture, but not everybody likes pink all the time. Um, a lot of my clients are into blue or green right now. Those are all February colors as well. So I'm gonna do a little bit of more of a blue, a little bit of dash of pink vibe. So it still feels um, kind of Valentine inspired. So I'm going to glitter press this one. So let's come in here. So it's sticky, remember? So I'll come in like this, kind of bring it up. I don't have to bring it all the way up. Actually, I think I do want to bring it all the way up. I want a lot of glitter right now. See, I change my mind in the middle of my nails always, but that's what makes them unique, right? Come in here and make sure my sides are clean. So this is gonna look dimensional too. This is gonna look a little more. You'll see when I'm done. Cause when you sprinkle it in, it kind of falls in different directions. When you do like a glitter press, it's a little more flatter, but you'll still have a dimension. It's just gonna have a different reflection. So from here, press this in. Remember it's all glitter. You're fine. You're not tacking up the nail. If you do not, you're not messing up the gel because it's just all glitter. If you don't want to touch it with your hand, you could totally do this. Take a little tab, put it like this and just tab it in. Okay. It's a little trick I do. So I would just put this under the light literally for 15 seconds. And the reason being is I want my gel to hold on to it when I go in with my next layer. So 15 seconds is plenty. Seems like a lot of steps. However, it's really not because you're working on the other hand and your client's going in for you. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my in love and I'm gonna use silver polka dots and blueberry. I'm gonna take my base to my base from cuticle to free edge. Let's touch this. I'm gonna do some hearts in different directions. Let's do some silver polka dots. Actually, I'm gonna put a heart on top of a silver polka dot. Let's reposition this. Ooh, that looks cool. I'm gonna do that to that one too. Ooh, that gives a really cool reflection. Let's start putting different mylars. Let's put one more heart right here. So I just have them all different ways so it'll facet, the lights will facet really cool. Put a bunch of pieces of mylar everywhere. So this is kind of an iridescent look as well. I'm gonna kind of add a little more to it at the end. Hey, do I want any more silver? Ah. That looks cool. Okay, I kind of like how it's reflecting. Now I'm gonna set this in for 30 seconds. Okay, when you look at it, you could kind of see the little bit of a difference. It has a little more blue in it kind of a cool blue glow. I'm gonna use Build Pink still and repeat my process from my other nail. I'm going to get a good amount because it's a longer nail. Okay, let's add. Go straight into your gel. Bring her straight down and then fill in your sides. Again, as you could see really close, let me move this out of the way. It's a very light touch. I'm not inside my gel, I'm taking it right on top of it. I'm gonna add a little bit more here. So on this one, I'm carrying 30 seconds to flash set it. After 30 seconds, I'm gonna look at it from the side and see if I need to add. Okay, looking at from here, see how you see a little mylar sticking up? Not a big deal at all. A lot of people worry about that. If you wanna cut it off, you can. The reason being is your gel will like go to the side with it. You could totally cut it or you could leave it. It's not gonna matter, you're gonna file it anyways, okay? So here, I see I could add a little bit here and just a little bit here. Always look at it sideways, because when you look at it from the top, it doesn't look like you need to add anything. That is for your strength and your apex. 
Okay, I need a little bit more through right here. There we go. So now, I think this is my last gel nail I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do something gel on your pinky, but I could go back to that after. I'm gonna final cure it for, for 60 seconds at this point. My next nail is going to be acrylic. It's gonna be a super fun nail. I think it's gonna look pretty sexy. I don't know, that's my aim. Let's see how it comes out. I'm gonna use a little bit of netting, which I think netting's kind of, netting's kind of like a fishnet hose, which I think is pretty sexy. I'm gonna use a mixture of slick pour, acrylic, liquid art, mylar, and netting. Um, if you notice here, I have two damping dishes. When you use liquid art, you really should have two damping dishes to clean your liquid art brush and to keep it kind of wet a little. I find if you hold it to the side or set it down, it tends to harden. So I like to work with two. This one's my clean one. This one's my one that cleans out my liquid art brush. I'm gonna put my liquid art into here so I could put the depth of the red I want. You can make a really light red. You can make like a really deep red. You could play with it. I'll show you how. I am gonna um, build it out with, um, I'm gonna use a little bit of Cover Flamingo and Clear. And this one's, stand, yeah, Power Stance, yep. It's like a deep, almost black, but purple. It's gonna look really cool. And probably just a little bit of, of Raspberry Mylar. So let's get started with that. I'll make my liquid art first. So you have to be very careful with the liquid art because it will stain your fingers, your clothes, everything. This will last you a really long time. Um, honestly, my liquid art does last me a long time, but it's one of my favorite things to use. I use it in gel and I use it in acrylic. I'll show you in gel in another time. Um, if you store it like this, it'll last you a long time. So the way you get it, you have to close it back like this. When I first purchased mine, I put this on and I stored it like that. This isn't airtight, so it kept going down more and down more. And I'm like, who's using my liquid art? Honestly, it evaporates just like monomer does because basically that's what this is. This is colored monomer. So if you store it like this, it'll last you all the way to the last drop. Okay, so when I first make it, I'm gonna get my liquid, get my brush, and I'm going to touch my liquid to my brush and pour some liquid in here. Now when I open my liquid art, I'm gonna squeeze this first and then go in a little, and when I release it, it's gonna suck some up. If you just go in, it's so full to the top, it's gonna, it's gonna overflow everywhere, trust me. So squeeze this little doodad right here, and then submerge a little, come up, and you actually see how much come up. So now what I'm going to do is, if you look close, I'm gonna add probably like six drops. Two, three, four, five, six. Let's see what six do. Put this back in here, set it right here. So how I'm gonna test this is to see really the depth of the color. I am going to get my brush, brush and submerge it, get it and put it on here. That's a pretty color. It's kind of like a really bright pink or a red. I want a little more intense. I think I'm gonna probably want like 13. I'm not sure. It looks like the depth of it, I want it to kind of look there we go, yes, that looks like I want it. So what I'll do, let me show you how I clean this. That's about as clean as you're gonna get it right there. These are cool tips I'm showing you because it really helps with your storage process. So let's see how pink this is now, or how red it is. Oh yes, it's very, very red. Okay, so I really like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my form on. Let's make this one stiletto. It's supposed to be sexy, right? <laughs> we'll see what it comes out like. I haven't done this one yet. I just kind of picturing it in my head. So let's get my clear out, cover flamingo, my liquid art. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is use my flamingo, set it right here. All I'm using my flamingo for is camouflaging her natural nail. Kind of making it look flawless. It's a really blushy, pretty pink color. It's one of our new colors. I think it's super pretty. Okay, so the reason why I'm putting this on first as well, liquid art stains your natural nail. So if my liquid art comes up on top of this, it's not gonna matter. It's not gonna stain our nail because there's a little bit of color there, a little bit of pink acrylic. So what I'm gonna do now is wipe off my brush, submerge it in my liquid art. 
pick up my my clear so it's going to turn red drag out some monomer i'm going to place it right here bring it kind of down some i'm going to work it all the way up to my cuticle area so as you can see i don't care if it gets around the smile line i think it's still going to look really pretty but I need to bring it all the way down past my pinch. Okay, I need to add a little bit more. The reason why I drop my monomer is it's, I don't want it to run everywhere, so I'm not playing with it forever. Come in backwards with it, bring it past my pinch. Now I want this very paper thin, and I'll explain why. I'm going to put my netting inside of it and I want my netting to go down as far as I can to have a dimensional effect. If I put it too thick and I put my netting in, I'm gonna file out my netting. Okay, from here, I'm going to move my liquid art. And remember, I wanna show you again, place this in here, okay? That way it's gonna stay clean, moist when you're trying to use it. Okay, so from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some of my raspberry mylar. And I don't want a lot of this. I just kind of want a little reflection random. So I am um, move these out of the way because I'm done with that, but I'm gonna keep my clear here. I just want some flat pieces. Some of these are kind of stuck together. So I'm, I'm bringing out more than I, I'm going to use, right? You could always put this on a paper towel and put them back in when you're done with them so you don't waste anything. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my clear and I'm gonna just barely wet it. Do you see how little bit I put on there? I do not want a lot on there because I don't wanna build thickness, okay? All I wanna do is wet it so I could have these little pieces in different spots. Really, all I'm doing is just little pieces here and there. So you're gonna have kind of like a bluey purple glow out of there. I think it'll look really good with the slick pour I'm gonna put on top. Okay, it's already drying. So as you could see when I move it, all I did is wanna create reflection, that's it. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move pretty fast, okay? So I'm gonna take out my netting. And liquid art's messy, I'm telling you right now. I charge $10 for a liquid art right off the bat. It's something that no other company really has. And if they do, I find theirs changes color or lightens. Ours stays the same color through the whole process, even when they come back, say, four or five weeks later. So liquid art is kind of like a stained glass effect. You're going to see through it. It's going to be crystal clear when I'm done. So because it's so messy and you have to have so much stuff, I suggest you charge 10. Remember, you could charge what you want. I'm just giving you a guide. But um, you charge 10, it pays for itself at that point, And everything after that is pure profit for you. Okay, so the little netting here, I'm gonna have ready to go, I'm gonna put it to the side and I'm going to encase and clear from here to here. If you wanted to add glitter at this point or whatever, you, you could add, it's up to you. I'm gonna keep it a little more glass effect and a little more shiny. So I'm going to get my clear and encapsulate the entire nail. Start at my cuticle. Blend it in. And backwards with it kind of melt it in and you need to move kind of fast because you when you do your netting you want it to be drying at the same time see it's still really wet but I covered my whole nail I need a little bit more right here now I'm gonna show you a little trick I do and I'm gonna do it really fast I get my monomer and my brush with my red and I cap it on the tip the reason why I do that is sometimes it gets a little lighter on the tip and I want it intense all the way through. Okay, now I have about 30 seconds, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going, let me move this out of the way. I'm gonna stick this inside of my powder. What it's doing is it's basically like when you cut cookies, right? Putting it into the flour, then cutting the cookie. You have to do this with the acrylic. Now, when you're, before you put it into the nail, okay? So see how you, you see the nail, it's a little shiny still. Once the whole nail turns all matte, you have about 
20 seconds about. It's cooler in here, so I probably have 30. In the summer, you have to do it really fast. It'll get really matte fast. So see how it's almost all matte? Okay, all my shine's gone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out of here. Come right here. Pull it the shape I want. Put my finger underneath the fingernail and bring it down as far as it will go. As far as it'll go. See how all the acrylic's pushing through it? Okay, when you see it like this, you can kind of see the colors come through. You're gonna slowly, slowly from each side. Don't just rip it out, just slowly, slowly take it out. Coming out good. I like it. All right, this looks good. It's gonna look really cool. Okay, and you're left with this, okay? So what I'm gonna do from here is move my clear and I'm gonna take out my Power Stance, which is my Slick Pour, it's colored acrylic, and I'm going to use my brush, use it real wet and get it all in there. Do not draw the monomer out. Put it real wet and you see how I'm kind of shoving it in there? It's going in all those little negative spaces that you created with the netting. This looks good with black too. I just kind of wanted to use purple. I've really been into purple lately. I've done something similar in black. Black looks amazing, but this color I'm pretty attracted to. So now once you have it in everywhere, let's make sure it's in the tip. I'm going to push on it just a little with my brush, just a little, make sure it's all in there. Okay, and I'm going to let this dry. We are done with that now. This is where it looks like a hot mess and your client's like, what? <laughs> One more thing I do is I put my fingers in my powder and I push on it at the same time, like on each side to create a nice C curve. So while this dries, I am going to finish my my pinky nail I already built it out I'm gonna do like a gel polish art on top of her nail I'm gonna do I'm gonna use she's a pistol and bite your tongue which is like a red and a pink color um, I'm gonna put it on top of a base gel so it moves pretty well I'm gonna use fizz and funkadelic and funkadelic glitter will kind of create like a really cool lavender purple glow so let's get started with that so the first thing I'm going to do is Put base from cuticle to free edge on her finger. Okay. Now I'm not going to cure it. I'm just going to leave it uncured so my gel will flow pretty well. Let's do some of this. So you don't need to be neat about it. Just kind of use your imagination with it. Okay, I'm gonna go into my fizz. Remember, it's gonna keep moving on you, so you kinda need to babysit it a little. Okay, I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna kind of outline some. I feel like red, pink, and white are very Valentine, very literal colors for Valentine's Day. Put a little more white here. Okay. What I'm going to do now is move everything aside and one more thing. Let me make sure it's very tight because I don't want to file this nail at all. It's already filed and shaped. So I'm going to fully cure her 60 seconds. Now she's fully cured for a minute. So you could actually touch it because Mission Control actually doesn't need a top coat, right? It's a non-tacky cure. I still want to add. So there's two gels you could add to it. You could use conversion gel either top or base, or you could use manicure top on top of it. So I'm gonna come in with my manicure top and do a thin coat on top of it. So now what I'm gonna do is open up my Funkadelic. I think I'm gonna go like on, 
put it in a couple spots here. Probably on my pink. So I don't want to overpower it, so I'm just getting it with my little brush here and sprinkling it in. If I actually touch the top coat, what will happen is it'll get tacky a little. Here I'm gonna to touch it a little, but I'll have to wipe it. When I put my final top coat on, you'll see the glitter. If you can't see it already. Okay, so now I will cure it 30 seconds and then I'll go into my final top coat. I'm going to use some ultimate finish and go from cuticle to free edge. And as you see, if you look close, you'll see all the little purple lights in it. That's your Funkadelic. Make sure you seal it all. So now I'm going to final cure this. It cures in one minute. I'm going to do two minutes just because it allows me enough time to clean and cures it to its fullest shine. Um, every light's different. So I feel like if you cure it two minutes, it's gonna cure to its highest shine. Okay, so this one's totally done. That's really cool. It has a really cool purple glow to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to finish file these and I'm gonna come back with the finished look. So I'll be back. Okay, so I filed them all out. Um, got them pretty tight and shaped. So I'm gonna do my finished look. I'm gonna protein bond on top of all the nails. I always protein bond on top of all the nails before I top coat. I think it just looks more, the clarity looks better. It ensures that my top coat's gonna stick on very well. I just like the look of it. I think that looks cool like that, but let's make it look more dimensional. So if we paint on top of it, it's really gonna make it look dimensional. Let's do some different blues and white. I'm gonna use my thumb as my palette like I usually do. gonna kind of just use my imagination here and if I did this on a few of the nails I wouldn't put it in the same spot on all of them a little thicker there and bring it around okay I kind of like that so let's flash set this do like 30 seconds okay then what I'll do is I'll trace it with orbit and sonic but I was using the striper brush now I'm going to use the detailer and I'm going to come in here just gonna kind of highlight the color on it. You know, a lot of my clients have been asking for blue lately, blue and green, a lot. So this has the hearts in it. It's Valentine inspired, definitely, but not a whole lot of pink. I'm gonna kind of go inside the other color with it. That looks kind of cool. So let's set this. 30 seconds. Okay, so guess what? She decided she wants pink added to it, so let's add a little more pink. Cool, that looks cool. This pink is actually bringing out all the colors inside the nail. Let's go ahead and cure this. 30 seconds. So now let's top coat all these. I'm gonna use um, Ultimate Finish Gel. This one, you could see, you could kind of see through it. It looks like a stained glass window with a little bit of netting in it. This one looks kind of retro. I was telling them it looks it, like it has hidden hearts in there like they're secretly in love. <laughs> this one I really like because it matches everything. It's pretty neutral and it has a bunch of iridescent glowing hearts and moodies. It's very pretty. Okay, so these are all complete with their top coat. I'm gonna cure them for two minutes. Okay, so now they're two minutes cured. They're super shiny. I really love our new formulated um, Ultimate Finish Gel. It's super pretty. I find myself using it a lot. Or Stain Resistant, those are my two favorite. I always obviously use Manicure Top a lot for art. Um, I like it because it's really thin and tight. But from here, basically what I'm gonna do is cuticle her cuticle oil her cuticles. And on the stained glass one, sometimes I put a little oil underneath if dust gets under there, rub it all in, and they're done. I hope you enjoyed it.
I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Also, if you didn't know, we're on so many other channels. Check us out on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, Snapchat. The list goes on. Please, please, please check us out.